Welcome to What's New in BCCL version 3.0. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, this is a new version, a long time coming, but now it's here. And um, for those who do not know what BCCL is, BCCL is a data mover tool that can move data in of, into Business Central, out of Business Central, work with a bunch of different uh, sources and destinations. Um, the CL part of the name implies command line uh, that you can you, you can use BCCL to incorporate into your own scripts and, and tools and just have BCCL be the engine that actually moves data in and out of Business Central. Um, we have a lot of uh, a lot of new uh, exciting features in in this version, so I am going to show you that. And the first one is perhaps the most requested one. Here is the command line. We got to start in the command line. Um, that is the ability to replicate from the change lock. Um, so if I do BCL cheat task, so I ask BCL, show me what you can do. We get a bunch of a list and one of the new ones that we're talking about here is the change lock function. And um, it's super simple. Um, let's tell it to use the change lock, add a setting that we want the change lock for table 18. Uh, with that, we need a mapping file so I have um, I have already created a mapping file called a customer mapping file the mapping file has is a JSON that says okay this is the field in business central and matching this field in SQL that can either be built by hand or with a tool that I will show you in a second there's actually multiple tools that can do that um, so we have we want to do change lock. We want to do it for table 18. Use this mapping. We need to tell in this case that the destination is SQL. I have already connected BCCL up before I start the video, so it knows where SQL is. It knows where my business central is. Um, I hit enter. And um, uh oh, there's a bug here because I have actually not told what table on SQL I want to work with. So I can do that with the das o command and the table is called customer. And we're done. So we can see that there were things happened. So we had three updates, no deletes and 52 old deletes, meaning that there are deletes in the, um, in the change log that tries to delete a record in SQL that's not there because I already did this. So if we go into the customer table, let's just uh, go down to 850. Here's Jason uh, on a road. So now we made a change to Jason. Uh, and well, let's delete this Eric. Uh, so we'll delete him. Go back. We run the same thing again. Now we can see that there's one more updated, there's one deleted. Uh, so if we run this again, well now we cannot delete that one again. Uh, we can also set a filter so we, we're gonna work with um, only, only take the change log from a specific period in time. But there's a new, uh, so now we've been in the, the, the command line and this is just how BCCL has always been, but now there is a different way of working with BCCL. Um, and the way is that we can actually go here and what I need to do is that I need to rename a file. So I have a file called BCCL underscore service. Um, and the BCCL underscore service file um, have basic, connect basic connectivity information about how to connect to Business Central. And nothing else and it has a name here um, so now when I run PCCL something different happens because now it's just a well it's it's running um, and uh, this can also be which would be the normal way that this will be installed as a service on your Windows server and just sitting there and enjoying life so now with with this running 
I'll, I'll go back here to the BCSL menu, uh, main menu, and I have service tasks, which is the new one. And service task is basically a UI. It's a way for you to ask the BCSL running, and we can see that it's available. The one we were just playing with, install last scene. That's right now. Um, so I can create a new task here. Um, called test one, customer, change lock. Uh, and I want to do a change lock. And I want to do this to SQL for table 18. Um, and then I need to put in a SQL connection. So I'll paste in a uh, server connection string. And I will tell that we are working on the customer table. The last thing I need to do is assign an agent. So if I have multiple servers installed with multiple agents, I choose the one I want to be the one running this task. And I click Start. And um, we can see it's now I'm just clicking F5 so we can see that things are happening. So you saw the brief working completed. We can go in and look and see it ran. So now instead of having to work out in the command line and typing commands, you can you can just set this up inside Business Info and, and run it from here. So this is a, just a normal task. Uh, one thing I would like to mention here, uh, unrelated to, um, to the change lock, is that, uh, let's actually just create a new one. Uh, test two, or just test perhaps. Um, FTP test. Um, so let's say that we need to get data from Business Central, but we actually need to upload it to an FTP server on SFTP or FTPS. That is now supported also. Also the other way around, so we can use BCCL to grab a file on an FTP server and pull it into Business Central. Um, typically, as in, now this is as, a, as the technical part, so there will be something custom that will process the file, but it's possible. And now, um, let me just quickly continue here and then do my test two. So, change log again. This time, I will, I will create this as an automation. And an automation is basically a task that you can run multiple times. Uh, so I'll do change lock, I'll do SQL, table 18, and uh, let's see if I still have that in my clipboard I have, and the customer table. So now I have this task here. Uh, I actually have the option now down here to say f filter change lock to only entries since last run. Um, let me turn this on. So since this one has never been run before, so if I, I click start now, something slightly different happens. So I still need to assign a, a, an agent. There you go. I click start. We can see that it's a different task that has been started. So if I go and see see task from automation, you can see this one ran. We can go in and look, and this is just you no know, normal. Four updated, zero deleted, fifth three already deleted. If I run this again, so I click start here, we get a new task number two. That has also com be completed. We can open that, look at the locking. Uh, and while we're probably within the, uh, the, the window of, uh, of, of the, 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 the time filter. Um, so if I now go and go to customers and I make another change uh, here. We go that, we go back to this one, we start the same thing again. So we have a third one now. We got the extra update here. Um, but what we can do also now is that we can schedule this. So we can say, okay, 
let's uh, schedule this and this will create a, um, a job queue process and we can say okay let's run this every five minutes set status to ready um, actually let's run it every minute uh, set on hold probably already ran set status to ready again so now if we look at task from automation suddenly we'll get a number five a number six and so on so we can we can have the change lock being replicated on a continuously basis simply running from the job queue let's see uh, if we can patient man here um, oh it, it is still the five minutes so let's just say restart if that's enough otherwise let's just run once in foreground go back to this task from automation and now we have five that is you see it's waiting for um, for the next available uh, time slot to working and now it's it, it ran so you can configure all these things now without actually the only thing you need to do in the command line is install the the software that is a brief uh 11 minute uh, walkthrough of uh watch new with the pc cell version 3.0 um the links below to uh to documentation to uh, the trial download um Give it a spin and let uh, let us know how it goes. Thank you for watching.